Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm Meaty69, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to talk about the Kran, uh, the Kran Wagen. Now this tank is loved by some, hated by others. Now when this tank was first in the game, uh, it was very, very strong, and it was kind of overpowered. Now, it has had a few little changes, um, nerfs, or however you want to call it, but is it still the same tank it used to be? In my opinion, it is. It is still a very, very strong tank when it is played in the right uh, way. If you don't play this tank in the right way, then you are really not going to perform well in this tank. Now, of course, it is an uh, auto reloader, uh, which those of you that don't know, which you should buy now, an auto loader compared to an auto reloader. So an auto loader, you have three shells or two shells or four shells or whatever. You fire all four and then it has to reload all four shells. Whereas the auto reloader like this, you have three shells. Uh, in this occasion, you have three shells and you reload one at a time so for this one you can shoot all three reload one shell and then you can shoot that one shell before you've reloaded the next shell um, in my opinion it is better than an auto loader because it just gives you that choice you can play it as an auto loader or you can play it as an auto reloader now depending on how you play it um all factors within the dpm how great the dpm or how bad the dpm is in fact this tank is the second worst dpm uh, tank in tier in tier 10 and um, we're going to look at the worst dpm tank in the the videos to come very uh, very very soon um so obviously for dpm wise it's better to reload all three shells shoot one shell then reload it, shoot one shell, reload it, and shoot one shell. It's better to do it that way. But of course, it doesn't always work that way. And you probably, even though you have better DPM that way, it's not always the best way to play it. Um, it all depends what you've got. I mean, look here, I've got one shell left. Obviously, I'm going to shoot it because I get to kill the Death Star. So it all depends on what is in front of you. Now, I've always said, if you've got a shot, take it. Like here, I've got this shot. Am I going to reload just one shell or am I going to reload two or three? Of course, I'm going to reload one shell because I now brought that guy down to a one shot. Um, so uh, most of my time driving the uh, something like the Kranwagen, I am really, I load all three shells when I can. Uh, but other than that, I'm literally just firing one shot shell obviously if you've got no shots then you can't shoot then it's best obviously to uh, to reload all three shells uh, but the tank itself is an absolute beast when you are in a hold down position just like you've seen there when you're in a hold down position it is a difficult tank to deal with and not many tanks are able to deal with the Kranwagen when you are in that hold down position um, so that's where I say some people love it because if you're able to get in that position then then you can dominate the game. But if you're not able to get in a hold down position, not always, you can't always get in a hold down position. It all depends on where the enemy go, all depends on what t your team does. I mean, like for, for example, this map here, I'm in the perfect, the very, very best position for this tank. If the enemy come behind me, then I'm screwed and it's no longer a good position. Um, so it's only a good tank or it's only a, a brilliant tank when you are playing it to its advantages. And that is on a ridgeline. You've got to play it on a ridgeline. If you don't play it on a ridgeline, then that is where the DPM factor comes in and uh, you're going to just absolutely uh, not do very well. So as you can see on my left side, uh, their team are getting ripped. They are getting absolutely torn apart. And that uh, that's a shame. That is a shame because I'm no longer able to use this tank in the position that I want to use it, which means I've now got to go on flat ground. Now, when you're on flat ground, this is where this tank doesn't become that good because it's not really got any armor apart from the turret. It's not got any armor on the hull, and you're just going to be absolutely torn apart. So here you can see I've just reloaded all three shells, and I'm going to release all three shells into this guy. So there's one, there's two, I'm going to get one more, and then I'm going to back up. So what I could do right now is just hide for a little bit. I've got to be careful of those tank destroyers there, which I know they're trying to shoot me, as you've just seen there. So ideally, I want to reload all three shells, but you can see here the grill. 
I might as well clear him. Am I going to reload all three shells? Or am I going to just reload that one shell and I'm able to clear a big tank destroyer? Of course, I'm only going to reload that one shell. Um, so then I'm going to get to the side of this or around the AMX 5120. So he is three shots. So again, what I could do here is reload three shells. But luckily my team is there. So I only wanted to reload two shells because it would have only took me two shells to take that guy out. And the same situation with this bat chat here so i'm reloading there's two shells am i going to reload the third or am i going to get the shot out on the bat chat of course I'm going to get the shot out. But this is where, like I said, the tank really does become a problem. When you're in the open, it isn't a very good tank. If you're able to sit in a hold down position, like we've seen on the first game, and pretty much the, the next game I'm going to show you mirrors the first game. It absolutely mirrors. It's almost identical, except for it's a bit more damage. Um, and when you're in this kind of position, this is where the tank really, really does struggle. When I've got a, a heavy with good dpm when i've got a light tank etc what am i going to do at this point like do i just reload the one shell because it's almost game over there's really not much i can do in this situation and of course i die so if you are on flat ground with this tank you will struggle and you're probably not going to enjoy the tank but if you're able again look at this we're on vine uh, vineyards we're in the exact same position that we was in the first game and we're pretty much going to stay here uh, for as long as we need. And that is the answer. Like, a lot of people were like, oh my God, you're camping in the same position or you're doing that. But no, I'm just sitting in a position for as long as I need. Now, if I've got no shots at all and I know that I'm not going to have any shots anytime soon, then of course I would move. But when you're in a tank like this that is only good played in a certain position, you want to stay in this position for as long as possible. If you know that you're able, you're, you're, you're possibly being a, uh, able to get some damage then you might as well stay here just wait a little bit longer you might not have the shots right now but i would rather stay here and be patient rather than push forward get in the open be, not be hold down and get absolutely torn apart so i'd rather just wait here for that little bit longer and take my time be patient uh, because that is where it will pay off in the end especially on a map like this like this map you can pretty much stay in this middle here most of the game and eventually you will get shots. They've got to come from somewhere and you will get shots off. So there's one kill for me. I'm on 2k damage and it, again, just because this tank has one of the lowest DPM tank, uh, one of the lowest DPMs in tier 10, it does not make it useless or it doesn't make it shit. Uh, you just got to play it to adv its uh, advantages and ever since the, the nerf, like a lot of people are hating on the Kranwagen, but it is still an absolutely fantastic tank. It is an absolutely brilliant tank, and I'm not going to ever take that away. Like, it can still do what it needs to do. If you're in this position, I mean, here, like, we're going to wreck these guys. We're going to absolutely tear them apart, and, and they can't penetrate me. I mean, they would if, uh, if I'm coming out at an angle, but if they can only see your turret, they will struggle. They will struggle to deal with you. And that is exactly what we have done this game. So we've now taken that shot on the, the Death Star. So what we're going to do, we are pretty much losing on supremacy points. Uh, it is a four versus four. So this is where I'm going to use my speed. Well, I was hoping to use the speed boost, which again, which this tank has got. Without that speed boost, it is a fairly slow tank. The speed boost does really help it uh, for that split second. Not long. Um, so right now, I, of course, I want to focus on that Death Star. I was ignoring the FE. I want to go for the Death Star. I've got one shell left again. It's a three versus three, and I do clear the FE, which now puts the favor in us. I mean, that E100 is a one shot. There's the Object 263, but we are now winning on Supremacy Point, so I don't need to cap that base. Now, the Fosh is a one shot. Uh, we do have a Death Star, but if the Death Star misses, then it could be game over, especially if he bounces on the Object 2 six three that has fantastic dpm so if the death star misses then then i we could be dead so even though this e100 is a one shot now i'm not taking anything for granted we could still lose this game so there's two shots and again we've got one shell left because we've got no shots at the moment we might as well reload all three shells now if i only reload two shells and i've got a shot on this object 263 
I am still going to take it. So 950 supremacy points. The Fosh is there. He's chasing this guy around. I don't even know how he lasts uh, as long as he does. He's now on 400 hit points. Now, of course, we're going to go around. We're going to get the shot there. And we've got one shell left. Of course, we are going to get that shot and get the kill. So that is now four kills for me. We've managed to block 810. But to be honest, if we had more tanks looking at us, we're in the position we was at, we would have bounced a lot more but luckily for us we didn't have that we had a couple of tanks and that was it we got a nice mastery badge and it just goes to show that this tank can still be absolutely fantastic so let me know your thoughts on the crime bargain hope you enjoyed it guys i'm meadzy and i'll catch you all soon bye bye